Welcome back. In this video, we will have a look at abstract classes in Dart. So I've created a new folder called abstract classes and inside of the folder I've created a main.dart file. So I'm going to create another file here that will be my abstract class. So I'm going to call this class rectangle. And we're going to use rectangle.dart as the file name. And inside the file, I'm going to have class rectangle. Now for this class, we will have two instance variables, which will be the length, because a rectangle has got a length and a width. So there's the length and the width declared. Now for this class rectangle, we will need also a constructor. So I'm going to say the constructor will accept two named arguments and both of them will be required. So we're going to say required double length and the other one required double width. Now the initializer, how do we initialize those values? We need to initialize the length with the underscore Core there and the width with the underscore. So the underscore length will be this length that was passed in. The same for the width will be the width that was passed in. So this is nothing new. This is what we've done previously, creating a constructor. And now let's just create a getter and a setter for both the length and the width. So we're going to say double get length. And the fat arrow will just get back that length. Underscore length. Right, then the setter for this will be set length. We will accept as a double a length. And then we will set the length. Come on, fat arrow. Let's say length there. So we will say length equals the length that was passed in. Now let's do the getter for, actually I'm just going to copy and paste this because it's really easy and we can just quickly duplicate what we've got here. Okay, so this one will be for the width, that one will be width as well, and we're going to access the width there, the width there, and there. Right, so we've got a length getter and a length setter, and we've got a getter for the width and a setter for the width. Right, so this is a normal rectangle class. So like we did before, creating a normal class with private fields and public methods to get back values. But we can declare this class now as abstract. Now what this means is that you cannot create an object of this class or an instance of this class. What do I mean? If I go to the main method now and I go and I say var rectangle equals rectangle. Now I'm going to select it from the list auto import from uh, rectangle dot dot. If I use that, you can see at once the length, let's say the length is 10 and the width is 20. But still it gives me an error. So if I hover over the error, you'll see it says abstract classes can't be instantiated, which means you cannot create an object of this type. But the nice thing about abstract classes is that abstract classes creates a blueprint for all of the subclasses that will inherit from it. But you cannot create an object of type rectangle at this stage because we've declared it abstract. Now another thing about an abstract class is that an abstract class can also contain an abstract method. So how does an abstract method look like? So for example, we could have double get area, which means that this method will return back a double, except nothing. But you can see that I did not indicate the body here. So normally we will either have the fat arrow there doing something, or we will have an opening and a closing bracket for this method to do something. And we will say return, let's say, 0, .0 there. So normally, your method will either have an opening or a closing bracket, or it will have the fat arrow to just say, let's return 0, .0. So in order to create an abstract method, 
you do not give it a body at all, which means neither the brackets nor the fat arrow. So what is this abstract method now? So what this means is that every single class that has got extends rectangle at the top must have this method implemented. Otherwise, it will give it an error. So I'm going to create a new file here. And let's call this one square dot dot. So this class will be class square. And it will extend class rectangle. So I'm going to auto import it, enter, and go down. So now we've got an error there. So I've imported rectangle dot dot. So just make sure it comes from rectangle dot dot, not from some math library or something like that. So if you click on square or hover over square, you can see the super class rectangle doesn't have a zero argument constructor. So it's it's basically telling us about the constructor, which we already know. And then it says missing concrete implementation of rectangle dot get area, which means basically they're forcing us to have this rectangle dot get area method. Okay, so let's let's just uh, have the errors there, which you can just use control dot or command dot on the Mac. You can create the call to super first, which means that for the square, I will have to call the super class constructor, which is the rectangle constructor. Now this constructor takes in the length and the width and sets the length and the width. But for a square, we know the length and the width is the same value. So I'm just actually going to have one value passed in here. And let's say double side. So the length of the side. And then for this super, we have a named argument for the length. So we're going to set the length to the value of side. And we have a named argument for the width. And we're going to set the width also as that side's length. Which means that for a, for a square, we're sending through the length and the width as exactly the same value. So a square is a rectangle. But it's a rectangle where both sides are the width and the length are the same value. Right, so that takes care of our constructor. But now there's still an error. So command dot or control dot, and you can see create one missing override. So this is what happens now. If you hover over it, it's still complaining about rectangle.get area. So because in the rectangle class we set a method as abstract, it means that any class that extends class rectangle must have a method called get area and it must have the same definition which means it must say double get area so let's go back to square so you can either just type the method or you can use the command dot or the control dot to create one missing override and you can see it gives you this now the body you can delete there and you can implement your own get area so for us it will be easy. It will just be the length times the width. So I'm going to use the fat arrow there and say length times width. And that gets me the area. And you can see automatically it's got the add override there. And if it's not there, you can just add it there. So we've implemented the get area method and now it's happy. So let's go back to the rectangle class. So what is an abstract class? An abstract class is a class that you cannot create an object of. This class can have normal methods and constructors and everything, but it can also have abstract methods. And if there is an abstract method inside of an abstract class, it means that every subclass, in this case, the square class, that extends rectangle, which means square is a rectangle, so it must have this method called get area and you can see the method is not defined inside of rectangle because it's got no body but inside of square you will give it the body to do something and that we call abstract classes and abstract methods so now in the main dot dot we can go and create a new square there so we can say var uh, square equals square choose it from there so it adds the auto import and we'll set the side as 10. And then we can say, let's print out square dot. We can print out the length and the width, which will blow both be 10. But we can also call get area there. And if we run it then, you will see it gives me 100, which is 10 times 10. Right, and that's then it for abstract classes. 
But I want to take this example a bit further to maybe show you something else also about inheritance. So if you feel that you've learned a lot already about inheritance and you don't want to carry on, then you can skip the rest of this video because we've handled abstract classes. So let's see how we can create another class. In this case, we've got class rectangle, which is abstract. We create a class square that extends rectangle. But what if I create another class? So I'm going to create a class called cube. So what is a cube? A cube is basically a square with a height. So I'm going to create this class cube. And I'm going to say extends square. So now in this case, I'm not extending the rectangle. Well, not directly, because the rectangle class is a superclass of square. And now we are saying cube extends square, which means that square becomes now the superclass for the cube class, which means cube indirectly inherits also from class rectangle. So let's see how that works. So for the cube class, if I use the command dot or the control dot, it asks me to create the constructor. But can you see there's no other error about that get area method? Because only the class that directly extends rectangle should have the get area method. So we already have the get area method there. And because cube extends square, then cube also has got all the methods of square, which includes get area. Okay, so for a cube, we will have an extra field at the top because a cube will also have a height. So it is still a square, but it's a square that contains a height. And the height and the length and the width of a square is the same value. So when we accept a required value here, we will just have, again, one value. Let's call it side. And that side is the same value that will be set everywhere. So into the super class. Now remember the super class now is the square class. And the square class just wants one side. So for this, I'm going to have side there, and I'm just going to pass in the side. And that's all I need to do to set both the length and the width the same value. Why is that? Because square passes in the side, the one value that you pass in, into the length and the width. So the only thing that's left to set is this height of ours. So let's set it here also as part of the initializer. So we will say the height should be this side again that was passed in because the side is the side for the height and both the length and the width. So by doing this, passing in the side there, we will set the height to that value. So let's say we pass in 10, then the height will be 10 and we pass 10 to the superclass constructor, which is this one. And this one pass in the length as 10 and the width as 10. Right, so that is just creating the constructor and initializing all the fields that we needed. Now let's quickly create a getter and a setter for the height. So I'm just going to copy. Let's go to rectangle. I'm going to copy one of these for the getters and the setters. Go to cube. I'm going to use the height there. This one will be underscore height. That one will be height as well. This one will be height as well, height, and this will be underscore height. Right, so that's the getters and the setters then for the cube. Now, let's say we want another method that we want to create here for the cube. So we already know that we have got the get area method. But what if we want to have a get volume method now? So we can so go and say get volume. And how can we work out the volume here? So the volume is the length times the width times the height. But in the square class, we already have get area that says length times width. So in the cube, I can actually go and call get area, which returns the length times the width. And I can just multiply the height. So I'm using the get area method in the get volume method in order to work out the volume. So now if we go to the main dot dot, I can go and declare, let's say var cube equals cube. And let's say the side will be 12. 
and I'm going to delete the square import there at the top and you can see your cube import is there. So there's the cube object now. So for that cube, I can go and print out cube.getArea and the area is the length times the width. I can also go and print out cube.getVolume. And if I run this now, you will see you get the area, which is 12 times 12, 144. And then you get the volume by taking the area, 144 times 12, which gives you 1728. So you can see that when we use the get area method, you hold down your control or your command and you click on it. It's going to take you to the get area method. And you can see the get area method is part of the square class because cube extends square and the square class has got that get area method okay and when i call get volume this goes to the cube class to call the get volume method that again calls get area get area is part of the square class and it runs this one okay so class cube then has got access to what to its own height and the get volume method but it also has got access to all of the public fields and methods of square which means it's got access to the get area method and because square has also got access to all of everything in rectangle it means that cube also has got a length and a width it can use the getter and the setters for the width and also use get area that's part of square so this is just a bit more complicated example of inheritance that uses an abstract class called rectangle which means we cannot create objects of type rectangle and the method there indicates because it's an abstract method it's got no body it means that every class that is extending rectangle must have the get area method i hope you've learned something from this video see you in the next one